Well, glory over light on people today, but big on Jesus. Amen. Although we got like 30 kids. We've got a whole congregation of children. It's not a bad problem. They're our future. Amen. But I'm glad you made it here. Looks like we already had a few people cut out early. All right. Well, we're continuing on our series. If you're still here, praise God. We're continuing on our series on the Bible doesn't say that. And uh, does anybody remember the first one we looked at? Follow your spirit. Follow, yes, don't follow. If I follow the spirit, I'll just be fine. Well, that we found that that's not biblically true. The next one we looked at is another one everybody says, follow your heart. We found that that's not biblical either. Now, how many know there's partial truth in everything? That the Bible says that Satan is an angel of light, so he loves to give you just enough truth to make you find something in the Bible that kind of looks like that. But how many know looks like and being is two separate things? And so we've looked and seen where we need at least three places in the Bible for something to be scriptural. Amen. And so how many know the Bible never contradicts itself? But there is time that scripture makes you scratch your head. Anybody ever been there? You're like, what is that saying? Well, and then someone will come along and they'll cherry pick that one scripture that says, what is God saying? And they'll take that out of context. And how many know that we need to look at what the whole counsel of God has to say? Amen? Amen. Now, as I was talking, Lord, during the service, some of these, I'm like, well, God, if he ain't been around broken chains, I don't mind beating you up sometimes in the middle of the service. I just want to always put you back together and make sure you're better than what you were when you came in. <laughs> Not do I want to beat people up? No, but as long as my whole key point is I always want you to get something that's going to make you better than what you were when you came in here. Amen? Amen. But doing this myth busting, I'm like, okay, God, some people may have been holding on to this for 40 years or longer because Grandma said it, and now I've just blown up their apple cot. How are they better when they leave? And he gave me a verse this morning and kind of reprimanded me a little bit, so I'm going to read you that verse. And it's in John chapter 8. And then we're, we're going to start in verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. And you'll have a slide for this one. And then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my feelings yeah. and by doctrine. Is that what it said? Everybody likes to throw around that big word. Doctrine. That's not what it says, is it? Come on, what's it say? My word. And everything we've been looking at is the word of God. We need to base our whole life on the word, right? right. And it says, then ye are my disciples indeed. So how are we his disciples if we continue doing the word of God? How I many know it's one thing to know the word. It's another thing to do the word. Right. We're not just to be hearers of the word only. Sunday morning, some places are full. This place could be full. We just need to go and get them. But, amen? But lots of people are hearing the word on a Sunday morning. But the Bible says that not many people are doing the word. How can you tell somebody's doing the word? Because they live different. They act different. They respond different. Come on. And so, but the re reason why we're studying this, he says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When the enemy loses a stronghold in your life, you gain a new level of freedom you didn't even know you were needing. As we're myth-busting, we're making you free into a new level of freedom that you didn't even know that you needed. Come on, can I, that, ought to, that ought to get down in your shouter this morning. That ought, to make you, that ought to make you happy. It makes me happy, happy, happy. 
So this morning we're going to do one that is like probably all time high of controversial things and people saying dumb things. And I'm going to say some really just plain things right from the get go. Okay? And if this is one of your beliefs, this is probably going to get in your crawl right off the bat. I just ask for you to stick with me to get to the truth. Amen. So that you can experience that new level of freedom I was talking about. Because we're going to look at what the Word of God has to say. Amen. Not Pastor Brian's opinion. Not what they wrote in some commentary a hundred years ago. We're going to look at the Word of God. Amen. So today's da -da 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 drum roll is You Can't Judge Me. Self-righteous chapter 2 verse 3. And that really suits that because that usually comes out and I've made another one. If Yeah, it's pretty plain if you're reading it. Only God can judge me. Actual translation, shut up so I can sin in peace. Here's the thing. Someone that says that has already lost the fear of God. Because if they were afraid, of, they should be afraid of God actually judging them. Now, next slide, Deacons. This is going to be one of the keys we're coming to. So, I'm going to show you a couple slides and I'm going to explain this type of judgment we are not to do. Judgment equals demanding that they are punished. And I want you to keep that key phrase in your head. Demanding that they are punished. Most people, when they think of judgment, they think of demanding that you are punished. And there's different types of judgment in the Word of God. And someday, if you don't get right before God, He will judge you. You're right. And you, there will be a demandment of your punishment. And if you're not saved, then there's going to be a judgment upon your sins, and there's going to be a demandment of your punishment. Now, as a believer, I'm never to wish you to be punished. There's times I turn you over to be punished, but it's always for you to be restored is the point. So no, and we are not to be that type of judgment, but that is not the only type of judgment there is, but this is the type of most people the enemy associates it with. Can we see that? And whenever somebody, have, do you know what the Bible says a brother offended is not easily won? When I'm talking with people and counseling with them, if they're offended and I'm bringing correction, they instantly try to associate it as judgment, this type of judgment, which is not what it is. If, if I was meaning you ill, I wouldn't be trying to talk to you and get you healed. Right? If God was start talking to you, trying to get you healed, they, they wouldn't be trying to get you punished. Trying to keep you from punishment. Y'all see where we're going? Don't worry, I got tons of scripture to back this up. We're just gonna, we're just looking at what the facts are. Because when someone tells you, you only God can judge me. They're saying only God can punish me and I'm not ready to be punished yet. So shut up and let me sin until he deals with me. Well, honey, he's already dealt with you and you've already refused him. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Big smile. Y'all still following with me? All right. So go back to the other slide. I wasn't done. But we are to judge because punishment isn't the same as correction. And how can I correct you if I've not judged your circumstances? How could I? Come on. How could I judge you? How could I correct you if I hadn't taken an assessment and judged where you were at by your fruit, which we're going to look at? There's no way I could correct you, is there? I got one person on board already. Let's look at tons more scripture. 
Next slide. Because judgment is not condemnation. It's only condemnation if you refuse to repent. Judgment, some of you are going to get free from all some things today just by that statement. Judgment is not condemnation. It's only condemnation if you refuse to repent. It's not even condemnation from God. God's not condemning you yet. That's going to come on the day of the judgment seat. You're only condemned if you refuse to repent and turn. You're only, you're only condemned if you refuse to repent for your sins. You're only, you're only, you know, you're only condemned when you refuse to wash yourself in the blood of the Lamb when God judged you on a sin. How do you know He judged you? Well, He said, hey, don't do that. But He didn't condemn you. He convicted you. Satan condemns you and beats you up. He passes judgment and says you're going to die. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. That horrible thing's going to happen to you. That's the accuser of the brethren. Don't mistake that for the judgment of God. Come on, I'm preaching good already this morning. Don't accept the accuser of the brethren as judgment, that's not the kind of judgment that comes from God. There's out there now for no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Outside of Christ there is, and judgment will end up feeling like condemnation, but if inside Christ it should be conviction to convict you to turn. Completely different feeling, because it's all about getting you free. But if you refuse to any type of correction, you've already lost. And that's where this statement is. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Well, okay, that ought to scare you right there. Two, that's not true. Well, there's scriptures that say you can't judge me. Okay, let's look at them. In depth, how about that? You want to do that? Okay, next one. Oh, look, a scripture. Matthew chapter 7. I'm like, I'm going to cheat and follow along with you all. Just a second. Let me pull it up on my handy dandy. says, judge not that ye be not judged, right? Oh, well, God said that. <laughs> judge not that ye be not judged. Huh. For with what judgment ye judge, you shall be judged. Now, wait a minute. Is he telling me not to judge? Is he warning me that what I do judge, I'm going to be judged? What? Which one is it? And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thy own eye. So, you've heard me teach on this part a bunch. Are you going to be compassionate to somebody if you haven't got your act together yet? But if you overcame something, you're going to have compassion for them, and your judgment's going to be how to help them overcome it, Right? But if you're a hypocrite trying to tell somebody else what they're doing wrong and you don't have your act together, you're going to, you're going to reap what you sow on that and it's not going to end up well. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what the Word of God is saying there? Don't worry, I'm going to back it up exponentially as we go along today. But are you seeing that right there? If we just took the first verse, it would be alright, but it goes on down, so either it's Judge or not judge, or then why is he telling us to fix our own selves first? Why would, if that was not part of the context, he wouldn't have put it in there. Right? Or how will thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thy eye, behold, a beam is in thy own. Thou hypocrite. Now, do you see that letter, that word there first, big and red? So he didn't say don't do it. He said, but before you do all of this, first do this. 
cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Once you got your life in order first, now you can go and help those. How do I help those? Because I've judged them and I know what they're dealing with because I was dealing with it and I dealt with it. Now I can help them deal with it. It didn't mean I couldn't judge them because I can't, I, I can, we're going to see later on where he says not to have something to do with something. Well, how do I know if you're a fornicator or a drunkard? Well, I looked at the fruit in your life and that's what you had. Big smile. How did I know you were a liar? Well, because you lied to me about 20 times, and I used to be a liar, and so I, a liar <laughs> recognizes a liar. God healed me from it. So now I'm going to call you on the carpet on it in love and tell you you need to change that. Don't be coming here trying to lie to me. Go lie to somebody else. Big smile. Come on, are you seeing what I'm saying? And, and I'm not talking about the harsh kind of legalistic stuff. I'm talking about doing it in love. Come on. I want to see where this is scriptural way to deal with stuff. If your heart, if your heart, did, has anybody ever went through something that you wish you'd had somebody that had already went through it, they could help you and give you scriptures to help you along the way? But today we're taught to be, our hackles come up. You can't judge me. Who told you? Well, God told you. No, he didn't. Well, I saw it by your fruit. That too. Come on, you see what I'm saying? If you buy in that you can't judge me, it, it means I'm not ready for you to deal with my hidden sin. Amen. Big smile. Strong preaching, isn't it? But how many people, everywhere you go today in the body of Christ, you'll hear this dumb phrase. I plan to demolish it before the day is over through the word of God so that you will be free from it and you'll have some liberty. Repentance and correction are the gateways to freedom. Don't let the enemy block you with a bunch of religious prideful junk. Amen? Next slide. Oh, here's another one that says judge not. You know, it says it multiple times. You're just one of those religious people. Luke chapter 6, verse 36 to 38. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Well, oh, we're not to judge them, Pastor. We're just to have mercy on them. Okay, so I see a drug addict using, and I know they're a drug addict. They even caught them with a needle in their arm. Let's just go ahead and be uh, exuberant about it. You know, let's not even talk about the spirit guiding you. And so, you know, I'm being merciful to them and they're hungry, Pastor. So I just gave another hundred to help them get them on their feet and I went on my way. You just helped destroy their life even more. You left them in a worse mess than what they were when you found them. They needed somebody to look at them and say, Silver and gold have I none. But what I have, I give unto you. Do you want to be free from that or not? They didn't need drugs, they didn't need alcohol, they didn't need even home to stay in. They needed to be free from their addiction and they needed to be called out of the darkness that they were in. They needed to be told that that's, now, now listen, there's, there's groups of people that'll go on the street and they'll tell everybody, have you ever lied? Yeah, yeah, and they'll get them down to this stuff and they'll say, well, you're a sinner and you need to repent. I've never beat anybody into loving Jesus. You do need to be merciful and loving and compassionate. Yeah. But you need to know the truth, okay? And so, as your father also is worth, judge not, and you shall not be judged. Now, this judging here, this word here, when you break it down into the Greek, does not mean the type of judging most. We're going to look at another. It means do not criticize. Do not criticize. Now, I've had people when I brought correction, you're criticizing me. No, I'm not. I'm being a father. Ain't you ever had one? No. Okay, I understand now. Let's still work on it. Big smile. Some of you are not smiling today very much. I know there's only a few of us here. I know it's a lot to take in. So criticize not, and you shall not be criticized. How many enjoy criticizing? How many love someone that's uh, always critiquing you? You, you ever had an arm, uh, armchair quarterback that always knows how to do everything well? 
but they ain't never done nothing, never played a professional football game in their life, but they can tell everybody how they should have played it. These are the type of Christians we're talking about here. Okay, you with me? Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Are we to condemn anybody? Now that is God's job, not ours. I will do everything I can to get, keep you from cursing your own life and condemning it. That choice will be between you and the Lord. I've never pronounced condemnation or condemned anybody. I've always said it. I've actually warned people, if you keep going that way, it's going to lead a place you don't want you to, you don't want to go. If they continue on that path, then my hands are clean. Their blood's not on my hands because I've done the best I can to keep them from going that way. But most of the time, by that time, they're like, you can't judge me! Are you listening today? Forgive and you shall be forgiven. That's always key in all of this. Yeah, and, so, and here's the next, it's funny, all of this is tied to a verse that everybody quotes all the time talking about blessings. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom with the same measure that you meet with all that should be measured to you again. Oh, Lord, bless me! Which he does. But he's saying, you know what? If you're merciful and don't criticize and don't condemn people and walk in forgiveness, same way you do that with other people, I'll make sure people do that with you. That's the real treasure of life. Boy, he's preaching now. Next slide. You're going to see right here in the scripture what I was talking about. Another translation that breaks it down. And do not criticize and you will not be criticized. Does that make it pretty plain for you? Anybody liking somebody? Now criticizing, when we think of judging though, we think of criticizing. But that is not what that word judgment means in all the other verses. It's only this one time it's used here. And it sums up how most people take the you can't judge me. You can't criticize me. Well, I'm never to criticize you. I am, uh, when I bring you correction, it's to bring it to bring you out of it, not to bring you down. Amen. But how you decide to receive it is up between you and the Lord. Right? Right. How, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they're in unity? How do I, and it also says we can't walk together unless we're the same. How can I know who you are unless I judge your fruit? Let's just come on. It, it would be ludicrous, wouldn't it? Every other I'm real see no other scripture would make sense if I can't ever look at your life and see what's going on in it. But the point is, is we're not to be judgmental and criticize and tear people down. We're always to bring them up. But sometimes that means you got to give them a little spanking too. That does not mean we're criticizing them. Therefore, lies the difference what we started with about judgment not being. A punishment. But if in your mind, anytime someone corrects you, it's judgment and punishment, are you ever going to receive anything? Come on, be honest. So do you think the enemy, listen, he knows the scripture. Don't you think he's purposely put this out there to hinder people? The Bible says, who hindered you? Satan. You can't judge me. You know? Almost any time you say something to someone, that's instantly what comes up. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Oh, you should be scared. That's usually my reply anymore. I'm just kind of old and brazen. <laughs> you shouldn't be worried about me judging you. All right, next slide. We're going to expound on this a little more. James chapter 4. James 4, 11 through 12. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. So now we're talking to Christians, right? I mean, we're not to be speaking evil to each other. 
We're not to be railing. We're not to be subduing discord. We're not to be saying stupid stuff. Now, there is a time whenever your life's out of order that is a body, you know, someone may correct you. We're going to get to that point. If every time someone comes to correct you, you play the victim, who's going to be the victim in the end? Who will be the victim in the end? So speak not evil one of, one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law. Now wait a minute. He told me to judge my brother. Now he's telling me not to judge my brother. Which one is it? Well, this is that criticizing stuff again. This is that punishment. I'm hoping evil. Come on. Let's go on down. He straightens it out. He don't leave us twisted. Speak of the evil of the law and judge the law. But if the law, if the judge, if, if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy, and who art thou that judgest another? Key word here is and destroy. Learn that we're not talking about the type of judgment that brings correction. We're talking about wishing punishment upon them. We are never to bring punishment. We are never to wish punishment on each other. Come on. Amen. That we're not to do. That is wrong. I hope they reap what they sow. I hope you don't. <laughs> you're, you're just about to step in big doo doo. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over the year. Oh my. Come on, anybody getting anything this morning? Yeah. All right, next slide. Matthew 18, 15 through 20. Matthew 18, 15 through 20. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. So if somebody does you wrong, this is in the body. This ain't talking about preachers right now. This is in the body. Somebody does you wrong. Go and tell anybody to listen to you about it. How do I know if you've done me wrong? Well, I've passed judgment on the fruit of the situation. I've, I've come to assume something. Now, whether or not I assume is true or not, I need to go and talk to you about it so we can get to the truth of the matter. Just because you have a problem doesn't even mean it's a real problem, but there's ways to deal with it. And you all need to get together and have a judgment time over it and look at the facts. Y'all see what I'm saying? So go and tell him his fault between me and him alone. Don't go bring everybody else into it yet. Go talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, right? And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee three, with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So now I'll go get two or three more, and you're all telling Listen, we found something wrong, and we need you to correct it. Well, they're judging that, brother. Yes, they are. They're trying to uplift him and get him to turn from the mess he's in. Are they doing it with love? They better be. We just read about what happens if they don't. Come on. This is still a thing in broken change, in case you're unaware. I know it's not happened almost anywhere else in the world, but it does happen here. And it happens in love. Because I'm not going to have your blood on my hands, and I'm going to do the best thing I can to help you make heaven. And hey, how about let's get you to your best thing? How about God called everybody that's, in, that's here today to do something special for him instead of just suck air and take up space? Let's, let's get them to where God called you to be. Amen? Amen. 
Well, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, let's work on your want to for a while then. Well, let's just work on it, all right? And if he shall neglect to hear, hear them, tell it unto the church. Oh, man. Now he's got brought in front of the church. Was that the first thing they did with him? Are they doing it to him to make him feel bad and judging him and trying to punish him? No, they are not. But everybody in that church better have their hearts right because that's not what the point is to be. And then if they still don't listen, he's a heathen and a publican and now it's time to kick him to the curb and let somebody else work on him. The point is that we're going to see later on the point is that they come back to God, not that they get punished. The point is always to make them right with God. I mean, no, you're going to have to do some judging if you're going to go through that whole process that we just talked about. Do y'all see the truth in that? Verily I say, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say that two or three agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask shall be done to them and follow which is heaven. For two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. There's another one of those verses that are quoted all the time, but look what was attached to it. Where two or three are gathered in my name. Yeah, you can straighten somebody up and get their life back together. And you can pray and bind some stuff so that people stop living like heathens and start living like Jesus, and you can help them overcome because you've got authority. Start using it. Oh, I caught Susie so and so over here, Pastor. Really, did you help them? Did you pray with them? Did you tell them you saw them? Well, no, I'm telling you. Well, don't tell me. You go talk to them first and pray for them and help them. Didn't you have a problem with that? Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I, I can tell. I'm preaching real straight. Is anybody getting some freedom this morning? The devil would love for us never to judge anybody when we don't judge nobody. We don't get nobody free. Can you see that? Amen. But we're not bringing punishment. We're bringing freedom. There's a difference. Next slide. John 7, 24. John 7, 24. It's in great big, huge letters up there. Judge not according to the Appearance. Every issue of life flows out of where? The heart. The heart. We've been studying. But judge righteous judgment. In other words, line it up with the word of God. If someone, listen, if it don't kind of make you, <clears throat> what's the thought of someone bringing the word of God next to your life and start doing a tally, then you're probably not living right. It's to this day. I think I'm pretty close to God, but the, the thought of getting that done, <laughs> thanks, well, I got a few things I want to work on. How do I know that? Well, I just judged myself because I didn't want you doing it. <laughs> Anybody in the Revelation? Next slide. Speaking of judging yourselves, all there's scripture for that. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. 28. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. 28. But let a man examine himself. What do you think another word for examine yourself would be? Yeah. Judging. <laughs> judge yourself. And you're not going to have to worry about getting judged. If you say, God can't judge me. The only God can judge me. I tell me you've not been judging yourself. Or you did and you know you're slacking and you don't know nobody else find it. Or shut up and let me have my sin. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And this is talking about the Lord's Supper up above all of this. And it's talking about those that are sick and dead among them because they took of it unworthily and didn't examine themselves before they partook of the Lord. So, once again, I'd be more concerned about God judging you 
than somebody else trying to bring correction. Now, is, is there a judgmental folk in this world who want to, to come to beat you over the head and, and condemn you? Yes, but you're not, we're not talking about that today. And no matter what they bring to you, how you, how you respond to that matters. Just like we're learning on Wednesday nights. You can't help it that somebody brings you an offense, but you can, you can determine what you're going to do with it when they bring it. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So if I examine and judge myself, I don't have to worry about God judging me. That sounds like a really good deal. Well, what if I'm doing that and, and pastor shows up? Well, then maybe, God, maybe God's been trying to talk to me about something else because if he's my pastor and I'm trusting him, then God showed him something he wants me to work on that I've been putting a blind eye to. And I probably ought to listen because I don't think he's trying to get me punished. I think he's trying to get me free. Now, I know there's judgmental pastors. I know those things. I can't answer for all those guys today. I can just answer for me and what the Word of God has to say. Amen? Amen. Next slide. I know it's a lot up there. So this is the same chapter that everyone quotes to not judge. And at the very end of this chapter, it goes on to say that we know them by their fruit. Matthew chapter 7, verses 14 through 21. So this is on down. Same chapter that he says, you know, not to judge in. Chapter John, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. On down it says we're going to know them by their fruit. How can I know you by your fruit unless I examined you? And we've done determine what the word examine means to judge your life and your fruit. How can I do that without doing that? Because judging you is not, if I'm judging your fruit, am I trying to pass punishment on you? Or am I just judging the quality of your fruit? When I pick an apple off the tree, do I want to eat it if it's got a worm in it? Or am I going to judge it and see if it's a good quality apple? I'm not, if I'm making apple butter, I'm not putting any of the nasty stuff in. I'm going to judge every apple to make sure that it's a good quality one before it gets processed. Some of you have never made apple butter, I can tell you. Okay. I'm showing my age in the hillbilly. Yeah, I'm, I was raised in another world. <laughs> so, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find it, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. Now, these are people that are out among the congregation and, uh, the world's full of wolves. Congregations are full of wolves. You want to know the good news, though? I happen to be a pastor that don't even give up on wolves. I've seen wolves turn back into sheep. The blood transfusion can change anybody's DNA. But handling a wolf can be dangerous. It can be challenging. But we need, how do we know if they are? Well, we can look at the fruit in their life. I mean, how many would want pastor not to look at anybody's fruit and just let all the wolves come in and eat you guys alive? Because if, if you want me to stop judging people and their fruit, then that's what's going to happen. Do you see what I'm saying? says, you shall know them by their what? Fruits. fruits. How do I look at their fruits? By looking at their life, what they're producing. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs, figs of thistles? You know, is their life chaos or peaceful? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Them trees were growing in the same orchard, sitting in the same church. 
but not all of them made heaven. Oh, I can, now how how could they have changed? Well, they could have let somebody judge their app, their fruit. They could have been responding and said, "Hey, there's a new pesticide out to take care of this worm growth. You ready to get that fruit taken care of? You got a bunch of rotten fruit on your tree." Well, I don't want to do that. You're going to prune. That's going to hurt. I don't want to cut off a bunch of stuff. You're going to graft in a new vine. It's going to change me. I don't want to be changed. Well, it's that or you're going to die in the fire. So your choice. The Bible said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. How many like freedom? How many want to be free? I do. Hey, listen, I remind myself of these principles all the time. Because the Bible says even the very elect to be deceived, so I don't want to be one of them. So I study to show myself approved to work in rightly dividing the word of God. And I take a good tally of my own fruit. And when I find a rotten piece, I cut it out. And I never tell somebody, only God can judge me. Now, I'm going to tell you as pastor, everybody judges you. And they judge your kids, and they judge your wife, and they judge every microscopic thing you do. And if they find one thing wrong with it, it enables them to live like a heathen. So I'm going to do my best to live above reproach, so that you want it, so that you'll desire to go to heaven. But I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it because I love Jesus. <coughs> Wherefore, by their fruits. Ye shall know them. So what do we have to do if we're going to know them by their fruits? We're going to have to judge them. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. Can we do that by, by this far along now? Right? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Are you doing his will? Are you doing the work? Lots of people are saying they are, but only the ones doing it are the ones making heaven. I'm not trying, uh, well, I guess I am trying to put the fear of God in you, but I'm not trying to bring condemnation this morning. But if God's dealing with you, that's a good thing. That means you're not so far gone that God can't convict you. That means God is trying to draw you back into the fold and say, listen, you got off track some. Can we correct some things? I think I need to do some work on your tree. Amen? Amen? Maybe you started off today one of those solid, you can't judge me. I hope I've at least broken that out of you now. If not, I'm not done yet. I'll keep working. On it. <laughs> Next slide. We are the judge in the house of God. How many know God's taking care of the People that refuse him. Sinners are getting judged, and he's taking care of them, and they're reaping what they're sowing. The Bible says, I said before you, life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. If you choose to live for the devil, you're choosing to be under the curse of the law and every curse that comes with it. When you sin to, for a certain period, for, for quite a long period of time, you can put yourself back under the curse. You don't want to do that, all right? But, so God's taking care of them. What about the house of God? We're supposed to clean up our own mess. The Bible says judgment shall begin in the house of God. There's been a whole lot of men of God falling and doing the getting. Things have been coming to the light. It didn't just happen all over the world. Why? Because judgment's beginning in the house of God. But it, it should have, it still needs to take place. But should we just rank every sinner up and throw them out the front doors and say, you're no longer good here, but and what, the whole time we're welcoming you and every other one that acts just like them? No, we're supposed to bring the lost and the broken in. But how many know after you're in church for a while, you're supposed to act different? Yes. And if you don't let the Word of God change you, that means it's going to... You, you ever had a... Like we used to have horses that were really stubborn. They would take a lot more work to break. Matter of fact, I worked for a roofer one time who used to break horses, and he said, I broke every horse I ever had, and you'll be no different. From then, to me, that was the biggest challenge of my life. I said, you won't break me. And so we spent the next three years in trying to destroy me and work me into the ground, and it didn't work. And I got promoted. He, he went on and retired. <laughs> 
He made me probably one of the best roofers they had. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes some of us are stubborn. Go ahead and admit it. And it takes a little more, unfortunately. Who the Lord loves, he chastises. He's not doing it because he doesn't love you. He's not doing it because he doesn't want the best for you. He's doing it because he, he's judged you that there's something found in there that doesn't line up right that he knows has to come out to get you to your best place. Now, we know as a body, we should be helping people to get them to their best place. And if they refuse to do any changes, we should help them along that way. And this is where it talks about us doing that. But nobody wants to talk about it because guess what? Then you may end up with a church with only 20 people in it. But if 20 people are sold out to God, God turned the world upside down with 12. As long as you make heaven and you come to Broken Chains Church, I'm happy. But I sure ain't going to leave you bound in your sin that you came in here in. So 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. I write unto you into the epistle not to, not to company with fornicators. The fornicators is people that's having sex outside marriage, uh, doing all kinds of things like that. And so, uh, now would he tell you, now Jesus went and met with fornicators. So how can this be? We're talking about in the church. Those fornicators didn't stay fornicators. That's what some people need to understand. You can't go to the club every week and say you're going to minister. He went there one time and they left with him and they were changed forever. If you keep messing, bad company corrects good character. You keep hanging around the world all the time, it's going to affect you. You're not going to affect them. You're supposed to be in the world, not of the world. Yes, you need to go minister to them, but they shouldn't be your bosom buddies. You're getting a whole lot of meat this morning. So we're not to keep company with fornicators. If you know somebody's in sexual sins, you're supposed to help them get free. Well, how do you know it? Well, the signs are usually there. But today, people, will, they'll hide that stuff like nobody's business. And it's more prevalent than ever. Right? You just, if you've got a cell phone, you're close enough to it. But our job is to get you free, right? So he said, get all together with fornicators this world or with covetous or exhorters, extortioners or with adulterers. For then much you need to go out of this world. Well, he, he pretty much, before he gets done here, he covers every type of person that's not trying to live right. What's the difference? The ones that are trying and the ones that are hiding. I'm just going to break it down to you. The ones that are examining themselves, what it say would not be judged. These ones aren't examining themselves. These ones are blatantly living it without examining themselves. These are the ones that say, only God can judge me. Do you see it in the Word this morning? But now I have written unto you keep, keep not to keep company. If any man is called a brother for a fornicator, a covetousness, adulterer, or a railer, one that goes up, Oh, a drunker, extortioner, such one not to eat. But for what I have to do, judge them also that are without. Do you not judge them that are within? He said, aren't you supposed to be judging the ones that are in the church? I'll take care of the ones outside the church. Why are you not to eat with them? Because if you eat with them, that is to them is condonement. Everybody is looking for somebody to put their stamp of approval on the way they're living. Nobody wants you to correct them. I can correct you and still love you, and that is something Satan hates. And as a church, we need to perfect that. But we have to judge stuff to be able to correct stuff, don't we? But I should do it with love. You should do it with love. Well, Pastor, we don't go out to eat two o'clock every day like we used to. No, because you're living like a heathen, and every counsel I gave you, you won't change. You want to talk to me Sunday morning's a good time. Come on. Are y'all hearing Pastor's heart this morning? Do you see why these things are such a big deal that the Bible doesn't say that? How much they just, the enemy is just 
like a snake just wrapped them up around our society in this trash. Twisted it and perverted it. Next slide. I've got a bunch here. There's a lot of people. I'm running out of time. Romans chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. Now see, here we are. This is backing up my judging thing. Well, that's why I'm looking at the scripture. Let's get the whole counsel of it now. Y'all still here? For thou that judgest doest the same things. Oh, he's talking about heathens that are doing the same stuff trying to judge other people. Oh, we already talked about that. The same ones that had a beam in their eye that were trying to take the splinter out of their brother's eye before they cleaned their act up. Do you see that? Don't go around judging people before you got your act together in that area. Overcome that area so you can so then you when you judge them, you can help them get through it. Can we see that in the word? But we are sure that the judgment of God according to the truth against them which commit such things. And by the way, God is going to take care of them. God knows the truth. And if they don't take care of themselves, He will deal with them. Amen, Pastor. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things and doeth the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Do you think you're going to escape the judgment of God if you're doing the same thing they're doing? Now that ought to put the fear of God in you. <laughs> Come on. Oh, despise how the riches of his goodness and forbearance and love serve, long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. It's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. But what, we, what were we talking about? That's another one of the famous verses. The goodness of God is what leads them to repentance. Oh, it's the goodness of God, Pastor. And then people, you hear people preaching this all over anymore. Well, the first half of that verse was talking about judgment. God judging them led them to realize how good he was. Nobody wants to talk about that, do they? But after that hardness and impenitent heart, treasure yourself thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judge of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Your hard, unrepentant heart is going to get, you're going to reap someday what you sowed in it. So why don't you just go ahead and judge yourself and uh, live a good life now. To them who are by patient, constant, all and well doing, seek for glory, honor, and immorality, eternal life. But Unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteous indignation and wrath, tribulation, anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil the Jew first, all the Gentiles. You're going to reap what you sow. Life and death. It's right there. You want blessings or you want curses? It really comes down to that simple. Which side are you going to be on? Which one are you going to strive? I ain't none of us perfect. All God is. 1 John 1 9 says He's faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and wash you clean of all unrighteousness. How do you know if you have unrighteousness if you've not examined yourself lately? And the Bible, which we're going to get there, I'm moving on, but uh, you know, you have a pastor, you have a word of God, you have prophets and apostles, and we, we have evangelists that come in and help you along these paths. But it's not just always tickle your ears. If it's not making you want to change your life, then is it really the word of God? Now listen, I like to make you feel good. I'm your pastor. My happiest days is when you guys are happy and full of the joy of God. We have just knocked down glory-filled services. That just makes me, we can have one. Now. But if you're not really free and you're not really working on you, have I done my job? For there is no respect of persons with God. Well, you're this, you're a pastor, they're this. I hear this junk all the time. Listen, God's God, and He'll He'll reel out to whoever He wants, however He wants. And if you'll do, if you'll line up with the Word of God, you'll be just as blessed as the next person. 
For as many have sinned without law shall also perish without law. As many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. I don't want to be judged and I don't want to perish. I think I'll just stick under the glory of God and under the blood of Jesus. But that means sometimes I'm going to have to judge myself. That means other times people are going to judge me, know me by my fruit. And maybe sometimes they're going to help me get my fruit together if I'm being a complete idiot. Big smile. Y'all still here? Don't that sound like a real family? Instead of, yeah, they're going through it. Sorry to see them. There they go. <laughs> Another one, 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 13. We read part of this, so I'm just going to go fast. It is reported commonly. Okay, who reported it? How did they know? Oh, uh, they judged it. They looked at the fruit. They came to the apostles and the disciples and said, This is what's going on. Who told on me? Well, God did probably number one. Second, other people saw your fruit and tried to help, and then they took it to the, they, when all else fails, they took it to the apostles to see what could be done. Y'all seeing this this morning? It reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as not, how many of you don't fornicate in public? Let's hope not. So, you know, there's the, the Bible says what's done in the dark is brought into light. I'm not trying to be whatever this morning, you know, but you see what I'm saying? That people people were trying to help. This was and so fornication is not so much as naming the Gentiles that the one should have his father's wife and you're puffed up and have not you'd rather mourn it. That he that done this deed might be taken away from among you. For verily I say, as after the body of a present spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that had done, so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus, when you're gathered in my spirit, the power of the Lord Jesus, to deliver such as one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. You're going to have to turn them over and be buffeted so that maybe they'll be saved. Not so they'll be punished, so that they will be. Saved. It's always to be saved. Do you think being turning someone over to be buffeted by the enemy is a fun time for anybody involved? If you love somebody, do you want to watch them go through the hardest times of their life? But would you do it if it saved their eternal soul? Yes. I still don't like it. I've had to do it several times in my life. But you know what? I see it work a lot when it's done right. Sometimes it don't even take that long. Do you know that? It's not a fun place to be when the presence of God's lifted off of you. The enemy comes in and just... You're like... Well, how would we know to do that? When would we know to do that? Uh, we'd have had to judge the situations and judge them and judge the fruit to know when to do it because God told us to do it. Am I making it clear this morning? Your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaven the whole lump. Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you're unleavened. And you know, a little dog turd makes all the brownies bad. He's saying, he's saying a little same thing with the body of Christ. You can't have someone in there. How many of those people don't want to go? You know, we, we have lost people who come to church. I get it. You know, but would you want somebody on staff here that was living their life and rampant sin that was uncorrected? You would not, would you? And if we didn't deal with them in such a way and try to restore them, right? I write unto you in the epistle not to have company with fornicators and all to get together, and yet not all together fornicators of the world or with covetous, exhorters, adulterers, for then you must needs go out of the world. But I have you not to keep coming if any man that's called a brother be a fornicator, covetous adulterer, railer, drunkard, or an ex 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 exhorter, extortioner, you know, the mafia guys, uh, pay your fee, everybody's most With such on one not to eat, 
For what I have to judge them also that are without, do you not judge them that are within? Do you not judge them that are within? Guess what? We're supposed to be keeping an eye on ours in the body and keeping them in line with the Word of God and helping. Are we to be religious, strong arms? No. We're to do it in love, merciful, the same way God did. Sometimes the only times people want to do this is because they want to beat on somebody else to take away from their own sin. And we see you can't do that. You've got to take the beam out of your own eye first so you'll have compassion for people. Am I making it up? So we, we, we fall in either ditch. It's kind of like human beings do. Instead of just doing what God calls us to do. But our point is today, does the Bible say you can't judge me? It does not say that, does it? Right here we see where we're supposed to do it in the church. But them that are without, God judges. So the heathen, God's judges, and he's dealing out curses as he sees fit. I was once there. Trust, take my word for it. You don't want to be there. Therefore, put away among yourselves that wicked person. Next slide. Some of y'all are probably going to gasp when you see the title. Ananias and Sapphira. It wasn't that they didn't give God all their money. It's that they lied to the Holy Spirit and tried to make a big pomp and stance about what they were doing for God. If more people started lying, you know, people lie to me all the time as pastor and think I don't know. They lie right to my face a lot. And I know by the Spirit of God. I'm like, if God, Holy Spirit starts knocking people dead like he did with Ananias and Sapphira, I don't know if I'll have a church left. Big smile. But let's read here. It says, but Peter said. So, well, God judged them. The Holy Spirit knew. Yeah, but who said it? So who did God use to judge them? Peter. Who did we just read we're supposed to be taking care of stuff in the house of God? The church, the pastors. You can't judge me. Oh, yeah, you ought to be scared if God does. You should be scared when he shows, his man shows up. He ain't speaking for him. I, I can tell you, when I speak for God, I'm just as, I, I, I'm probably more scared than you because I, 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 it's, it's an honor for him to speak through me because it's not me speaking. It's him speaking through me. Then Peter said unto her, how is it you agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? So they were trying to tempt the Spirit. What are you going to do, God? And then it says, So, and we need this to happen in the church again. To be in great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. So there was judgment brought in the house of God and fear of them. I believe we're going to have, as you're starting to see things happen in the, in the body of Christ, I believe we're going to have more and more of this. But I also believe that phrase is going to become more and more. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. You're going to hear that dumb phrase a lot more. And you have the word of God now. If you need these notes, we can print them out for you. You can study them. So, can everybody see where Ananias and Sapphira got judged according to the scriptures that we've been talking about? Next slide. Not my most one I like to do, and this is me talking. I'm just telling you straight, I have to judge you. I couldn't be a very good pastor if I didn't judge the fruit in your life and correct and exhort you and give you the things you needed to be a better believer and get to your best blessed life now. That's my desire. Not to always be correcting you. I want to celebrate the goodness of God in the land of the living with you. But I also refuse to let you go swim in a cesspool and tell me you're having a good time. You know, if a kid had only swam in a pool of sewer their whole life, and there was a pristine Caribbean bay right over here, and, but they had never knew it, never swam in it, they would think that sewer pool was the best place there ever was until you got them out of there. And then hopefully they would never want to go back. But you're probably going to have to correct them a little bit to get you out of there because I'm having fun. It's wet. It's hot and it's wet, Pastor. This is a good time. 
But it stinks. It's okay. You'll get used to it. I don't want to get used to it. Get out of there. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Well, how did I know it stinks? Because I can smell it. I judged it. You stink it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction. All of those are telling you to do something different than what you've been doing, and all of our different severities, depending on how you're doing. But we have to judge where you're at to know which one you need. Well, that's good preaching, Pastor. Praise God, I'm so happy to have this revelation. In righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. So, there you go. Next slide. It's the last one. Get, put up the judgment is not condemnation. So judgment is not condemnation. And only you can change your mindset and get the revelation of the truth. If you, Every time someone brings you correction that we've seen is from God and of God to help you, and all you, all you hear through the enemy is condemnation, you'll never get to be the person God's called you to be. Did y'all hear Pastor's heart this morning? And so that wraps up today's series. That doesn't wrap up the whole series. We're still continuing on. I know some of you are ready to be done with it already. Actually, maybe not. Is anybody enjoying this series? I know I'm doing it differently, but anybody enjoying this? Anybody learning things you've always wanted to know the answers to? I mean, I mean, notice that the Bible didn't contradict itself one time. Yeah. And it wasn't it amazing that all the scriptures that were taken out of context, if you just read, read two or three verses on down, they straightened themselves out? Yeah. Wasn't that pretty amazing? Yeah. So we're going to continue on, because you know the Word of God is powerful. I love swinging from the chandelier services. I love the glory of God flowing and I can't wait to get back there and who knows what will happen in the coming weeks. But also know that without the word of God to stand on, you don't have anything. And the Bible says you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That, and I want you to, to no, I was going to make a joke. I still will, but it's not going to be a good one. But, you know, I just want you all insights to cringe as much as mine now when you hear things like only God can judge me. I, I like get physically ill. I'm concerned. I'm physically concerned for people when they say that to me. It's such a monstrosity red flag. And I'm like, oh dear Lord, they are, they are trapped in a place that only God can break them out of. Almost. But then they hit my hit list. They don't know it. I'm like, yes, we're going to get free. Get them understanding what the word of God has to say. Amen? So, uh, I'm going to wrap it up with that. Deaconess, if you want to come up and take prayer requests, if anybody wants special prayer. Before we go, um, are you online? Anybody online? Is uh, Sister Christianis online? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have, have her permission, so I can't say well, all, if you haven't been around me very long, you'll know that I'm a very private person and I don't share anything. But she's uh, she's sick. She has some serious things going on. She is in the hospital right now. And uh, we're going to pray for her. She's watching. Just tell her to stretch her hand out in the hospital room and we're going to send the word of God there right now. All right? So, well, we just... Uh, you said call for the elders of the church and anoint with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and you shall raise them up. Lord, I just speak to, to Chris Yannis right now in our hospital room. We say we send the word of God. It trains in time and space. Lord, there's the anointing. And Lord, I curse sickness. 
And we command her body to rise up off that bed right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, just a Holy Ghost joy-filled fit right there in the hospital. Lord, let the, <laughs> Lord, let the glory of God descend. Lord, let, let her faith arise and the enemy be scattered right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I know we have others that are sick and I'm not trying to single anybody out. That's who the Lord brought to my spirit. If you are online right now and you need healing, put a message up and they'll pray for you. Amen.